Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back and watching. I appreciate it. Hope your day is going really well. I'm in On One Photo Raw 2019 today, and uh, you know it's a great product. I'm having a lot of fun. I've been uh, doing a, several videos about it, and I uh, hope you're enjoying those. I thought I would uh, use a luminosity mask in this video and talk about luminosity masking. I've got a couple of photos I've edited, and I used luminosity masks on those, but I thought it would be better before I got to those kind of workflow videos. It would be better if I first kind of explained what a luminosity mask was and how it works. So let's get into it. Here we go. Um, here's a photo I took in Wales. This is Conway Castle in Conway. Just kind of a quick snap. Um, and I've skipped over the whole develop tab and all that. I'm just going straight to effects because I'm just purely talking about a luminosity mask and I'm going to show you how it works. So I'm going to add a filter and just to make it easy and super visible, I'm going to add HDR look. And I might even hit Surreal just to jack it up a little bit. And if you look, there's the before and the after. Now that's applied across the entire image. You can click on the little uh, masking icon, which looks kind of like a Japanese flag. And you can see here's your masking view window. And it's all white. White reveals, black conceals. So the entire effect is revealed across the photo. In other words, this whole Surreal HDR look is going across the whole photo. When I toggle it on and off, you can tell. It's really evident in the stonework. It's kind of evident as well in the clouds. They're getting crunchier, kind of crunchier. I don't know what else to call them, but there's the before smoother clouds, which I like, and after crunchy, not so like. Um, but I like, okay, just to be clear, it's overdone, but the crunchy stuff kind of works somewhat on the stonework. Okay, so luminosity mask, what is it? Well. It's a mask that will uh, be made automatically, which is wonderful. It's super quick and easy. Uh, you just click Lumen, by the way, and it's made. And I'm going to hit View so you can see it. Um, it is a mask built on the tonal values in the image, basically. So basically, it'll automatically figure out the dark parts and the bright, uh, yeah, the dark parts and the brighter parts, and and basically lay a mask on top of them and apply the filter um, if you've made edits to it, which I have, to that mask, right? So now if I hide view, you can see that it's applied a luminosity mask. If I toggle this on and off, see before and after. Um, it's a lot more subtle implementation because if you look at the mask, it's basically shades of gray. You're getting more of the effect where it's brighter, which is white, which is the sky. Unfortunate, not what I want, but easy to fix. Um, and less of the effect where it's darker, um, which is the castle, which is where I do want it. Again, unfortunate, but that's okay. We're gonna invert it. And all you do is say invert, and there you go. Now your mask is backwards. Remember, white conceals and black reveals. So where it's white in the image, the effect will be revealed, and where it's black, it'll be concealed. So um, that's what uh, luminosity masking is and how it works. But the great thing is they have this little section over here, I mean, it's Z to get rid of that, uh, called levels. And this allows you to refine your mask. And so there are three little dots here. And if you can tell the line on levels, um, it goes from black on one end to white on the other. So that corresponds to levels like when you're using the curves filter, for example. And basically it allows you to adjust um, how much of the image is black versus white versus mid-tone. So um, I can start moving this around. And as you can see, I'm basically making the castle wider, which is good in this case. Now I want to take the whites and come this way. And you can see that which is white is starting to get um, darker. And so I am just uh, basically enhancing this mask and customizing it. So I'm just going to keep moving some like this. And basically, as you can see now, I've got a mask that is effectively um, nearly perfect in terms of it being applied uh, to the castle and nearly perfectly black sky. So if I'll just close the view men uh, menu or window, you can now see that my luminosity mask, because I've customized it with that levels, um, is now applied to the stonework and not to the uh, sky. So let me show you one more time. There's before, look at the sky after. Sky's untouched, right? The stonework, it's overdone, right? I mean, I did it uh, on purpose. I exaggerated. That's why I hit surreal. Uh, but it helps you see it better, right? So again, before and after. That is a quick luminosity mask. Now, you can also copy this luminosity mask, which I just did. Usually, it takes a second to render. And I'm going to go add another filter, and then I'll paste the mask and play around with that. So I'm going to say add filter. And I'm going to get this photo filter and I'm gonna get this 85. 
And um, when you click on the masking window, again, it applies to the whole thing. So I'm gonna say paste. And remember, if I click view, my mask is that. So I wanna do the opposite. I don't want, let me hide it again. I don't want that orange look being in the castle walls. I wanna put it in the sky. Again, just an example. You may not like this. I don't know if I like the edit, but it's, it's a good visible example. So I'm gonna hit invert. My mask is now basically black on the castle, which means it's concealed. So this filter's being concealed across the castle. That is, you don't see it. And it's being revealed, white reveals. It's being revealed in the sky. So if I turn off my view, you can see that that's had that impact, right? So there's before and after. Now, if you look at it, there's sections here where I can come in and uh, you, know, you can come and adjust the mask with the brush to further refine it. Uh, but that's the basics of luminosity masking. I'm gonna get one more photo and walk through a quick edit there. Okay, so now I've got this photo and I've made some edits here in the develop filter. And I'm just not gonna go through those simply because you know, we're mostly just talking about luminosity mask. I can show you the before and the after. So I've definitely bumped up the, uh, the light and that sort of thing. But I'm gonna go over here to effects and get a couple of filters and then we'll walk through how the luminosity masks work here. So I'll start with the sunshine filter and I'm gonna say, uh, let's see, strong. Let's say strong. Um, and so that applies, um, let's try glow. I like glow actually because I'm gonna add a luminosity mask. So I'm gonna click on that and I'm gonna click on luminosity mask. And you can see now that the glow, there's before glow and after. And uh, if I just reset the mask, you can see that the glow is going all over the entire photo in a pretty strong way. So I'm gonna go back, click on luminosity mask. And that's something about luminosity mask because it does allow, let me convert to the black and white, uh, because it does allow for variations or gradate, gradations in the mask, it allows you to more subtly apply things. And so that strong sunshine glow that I have um, becomes much more subtle. So it's a great way to have subtle edits to a photo. Uh, now, once again, in levels, I could come over here and really do some uh, adjustments to really get more of the uh, white in the photo. Uh, let's see. I'm just kind of messing around. I think something like that looks good. Let me close view. And now the glow is gonna be more prevalent and that's because I've got more white in the photo after, uh, in the mask I should say, after adjusting the levels. Hope that makes sense. Now, uh, once again, I'm gonna say, uh, let's see, I'll say copy and give that a second to render. It takes it a second usually to do this rendering. So what's that, three seconds? Yeah, about three. Um, I'm gonna add filter and I'm gonna get dynamic contrast. Now, uh, dynamic contrast, let me hit Z, I'm gonna get rid of that masking um, um, brush. Uh, dynamic contrast is generally, I did this in a previous video as well, you generally drag it to the right and bump up the contrast and it's awesome. But if you drag it to the left, things start getting really smooth as you can see. And so um, there's a lot of stuff in this photo that I would like to be smooth, namely sky and water. That's just something I like to do in my photos. So I'm gonna use that luminosity mask that I copied. I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna say paste. And give that a second and there we go. Now, if I click view, there's my luminosity mask. So once again, uh, I just copied and pasted. I didn't have to redo it. But um, I could come in here and adjust these levels. So I could do something like that. Uh, I'm trying to see here. Yeah, that's probably a little too much. Let's see what it looks like. Um, there we go. Um, all I'm doing is, uh, again, I'm gonna hit Z to get out of the masking brush. All I'm doing is adjusting the levels in order to get more white in the, in the mask because I'm trying to smooth out the water and the sky and doing that with a luminosity mask is a lot quicker than trying to brush mask it in. And by the way, brush masking between all these boats and all that would be painful, believe me. So um, let, me, uh, let me just close the masking menu. There's the before. You can see a little bit more texture in the clouds and the water, and there's the after. And now that I have that mask in place, I can come in and make further adjustments if I wanted to. So I could go more negative to create an even more kind of blurry look, if you will. Um, I probably don't want to go that far. I just like to smooth it out a little bit. It's just something I like. But that's really how luminosity masks work. I did one here, I'll just close that. Um, I did one for sunshine and one for dynamic contrast. And they allowed me to quickly and easily basically isolate tones 
uh, the brighter parts and the darker parts, kind of separate them in terms of where your edits are going. And then with the sliders for the levels as well as the ability to invert, you can flip flop around and make adjustments and it's super quick, super powerful, and it gives you amazing control over your photos that honestly, if you try to do it all with a brush, um, I, you'd still be here and you'd be here for a while doing it on a photo like this. And I would honestly rather move on and edit another photo. So that's how luminosity masking works. Uh, it's not detailed um, tutorial in terms of all the different things you can do. There are some other sliders as well. I'll probably come back, back to that in future videos, but I mostly wanted to do luminosity mask and show you levels because powerful stuff. I love it. Thanks for watching. I hope that you found this helpful and I'll see you soon, my friends. Have a great day. Take care and adios.